Good morning, Wesley. My name is Wayne McClam. This is my wife, Lavetta McClam. We are members here at Wesley United Methodist Church here in Columbia, South Carolina. And welcome to Wesley. Uh, we've been here for about four years, about four years, and um, we're actually from South Carolina. We were moving back to Columbia from Maryland in 2015, and um, we were looking for a church home, and I was on, at home, and I was looking online, and I told her that I was, I'm going to find us a church. So I was looking and looking and looking, and then I came across Wesley's, Wesley's page, and there was a picture of the church congregation on the web page, and I was like, wow, look at this church. And they look like my family. They look, the picture was welcoming. And as we came in to, uh, we came into Columbia and we visited, and um, what I saw in the picture, exactly what I got when I got there, I got warm faces. There was, uh, it was love. They were very welcoming. I mean, from the little kids, to our seniors in the church and our pastor, uh, Reverend Tiffany, she's just awesome. The whole church is awesome. We've been um, really blessed to be there um, at Wesley. Also, you can connect with Wesley United Methodist Church, our family with Facebook, email, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Okay, good morning. I want to lead us in our morning prayer as we go before the Lord and just worship him in spirit and, and in truth. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we glorify you, we magnify you, we exalt your holy name. Lord God, we give you all praise and we give you all glory, Lord God, for this day, a day that we have never seen before, that you have allowed us to be a part of. Mm -hmm. So Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity, to, Lord God, to, to be in a church, Lord God, that loves you and lift you up, Lord God, that truly seek your face for, for guidance, Lord God. So Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray for this body of believers, Lord God, and not just for our body of believers, but body of believers all over the world, Lord. I thank mm -hmm. you, Lord God, how your spirit just a rest upon the church Lord God the church that you created Lord God yes. so Father God I thank you Lord God for just covering mm -hmm. us with your grace and your mercy Lord God Father God we reach out to the leaders of this world Lord God we ask you Lord God to just lead them in the way that they should go Lord God we pray Lord God that you continue to strengthen us Lord God within our church, within our community, Lord God, and within our homes, Lord. Father God, we just thank you, Lord God, for, for life on today. We pray, Lord God, for people that are sick in their homes, Lord God, that's dealing with all type of diseases and sicknesses, Lord God. So, Lord God, we I just plead the blood of Jesus over them, Lord God, for, for recovery, Lord God, and a full reign of health, Lord. We just thank you, Lord God, yes. for grace and mercy on today, Lord God. We thank you for life on today, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, Lord God, as we seek your face concerning the things that's going in on the world today, Lord. We just want you to lead us and guide us by your spirit, Lord. So, Father God, just thank you, Lord God, for the word that's going to come forth, Lord God, through our pastor, Lord God. I want you to speak through her, Lord God, like never before, Lord God. And I thank you, Lord God, that everybody that hears your word, Lord God, receive it with the intent to do what it says. Yes. And I make this prayer in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And with that, Wesley, Shalom, y'all.
morning. I am Reverend Tiffany. I want to invite you now to join me in a word of prayer. God, we thank you so much for this day and this opportunity to stop and to pause, to call your name, to know that you're with us and that you promise to never leave us nor forsake us. We pray thanking you now for bringing us to this sermonic moment in our worship. We pray, oh God, that you would open up the windows of heaven that you would send down a blessing that is so great that we cannot conceive of it all. We pray God still understanding that lest the preacher comes, there can be no preaching in this place. So come on, Holy Ghost, and have thine own way. Speak, Lord, for we, your people, are listening. Speak, Lord, we, your people, are listening. We pray this prayer in all of our prayers in the strong, strong name of Jesus. And Lord, we as your sons and your daughters, we say amen, amen, and amen. Before we get to our preach word this morning, I want to take a moment and I do want to say happy Grandparents Day to all of our grandparents and that are part of the Wesley community, as well as those of you that may be guests um, in our community. We say happy Grandparents Day today for all biological grandparents, as well as all surrogate grandparents and the many of you that pour into the lives uh, of children. So happy Grandparents Day to you. This morning, as we get started, I want to share a few exciting things that are happening in the life of our community. The fourth Sunday in this month, September the 27th, is Homecoming Sunday. Wesley will be celebrating 151 years of existence. And so as a way to celebrate Wesley and to celebrate the ministry that God has allowed us to be a part of, some of us for several years, others of us for maybe not as long, on Sunday, September the 27th, instead of our pre-recorded worship service that you are watching today, and you have watched several other Sundays, we are going to have live worship via Zoom. That's right, we're gonna have live worship via Zoom. So what we will do is we will send out a link that you can log on to or you can dial in. So you can, do a, you can participate via video or you can dial in with your cell phone or your landline. And those of you that dial in with the landline, of course you won't be able to see the service, but you will be able to hear everything that is happening and everything that's happening live. So I want you to know that I'm eager to see many of you. I'm eager for the opportunity that we will have to engage with each other through the chat function on Zoom. Uh, I'm eager for the conversation that we won't necessarily be able to have or that we won't have during the worship service, but immediately after the worship service, between worship and Sunday school, if you'd like to, to talk and to converse with each other, uh, that will be something that will be able uh, to happen. I'm excited about what it means for us to be together and to actually worship together as we uh, have not had the opportunity to do that in months and months. Uh, and I'm just excited that we will be together in real time. So that's a very, very exciting thing. Now, I do want you to know that we know that's new for us. We've never done it before. It's gonna be a little bit different than our pre-recorded service but we are gonna try, we're gonna experiment. Uh, there may be a glitch or two, that happens y'all. It may be a glitch or two, we, we are hopeful that there won't be, but there may be a glitch or two. But the thing is, we are gonna to be together and together we're gonna give God glory. Now, in addition to live worship, uh, there are also going to be several ways that we're going to celebrate Wesley, Wesley's existence in the days um, leading up to homecoming. So I want to invite you to please stay tuned to email, uh, take a look at our social media platforms as we share uh, some tributes uh, leading up to homecoming Sunday. Also look to hear uh, about a community service opportunity focused on food. Uh, as we know, so many are dealing with food scarcity, particularly during the pandemic and all that's going on in our nation right now. And so I wanna challenge all of us to participate in that community service opportunity. So definitely look to hear more about that. And finally, as a part of our homecoming celebration, today we begin a three week sermon series that's based on the theme, 
God calls us not only to go to church, but to be the church. God calls us to not only go to church, but to be the church. Now y'all, this theme is particularly appropriate as we continue to live in and live through COVID-19. For the first time in over a hundred years, we cannot go to church. Our building and buildings all over the world have been shut down for months. Because of the coronavirus and its threat to our health, we have not been able to gather in the place that many of us hold sacred. We have been stretched and we continue to be stretched to, to learn how to worship and to seek God in new ways that have nothing to do with stained glass windows or pews or pulpits or choir lofts. We have been and we are being called to discern and actively practice what does it mean to be the church? What does it mean to be the body of Christ? What does it mean to be the gathered community of believers? So over these next three weeks, we are going to look to the witness of the New Testament church of the early church. We're going to explore the book of Acts as we learn lessons from the earliest body of believers that join together to live out their faith and invite others to, to join them in being the church of Jesus Christ. So I want to read to us just one verse this morning from the book of Acts. Acts, the first chapter, verse 14. It says, the apostles often met together and they devoted themselves to prayer with a single purpose in mind. The women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, would meet with them and so would his brothers. The apostles often met together and devoted themselves to prayer with a single purpose in mind. The women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, would meet with them, and so would his brothers. This is the word of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, from the inception of the church, the early Christians were devoted to prayer. It was the driving force behind everything that they did. Immediately following Jesus' ascension into heaven, the 11 disciples, they returned to the upper room in Jerusalem. And in this first chapter of Acts, Luke writes that the first activity of, disciples, of the disciples was that they joined together and they devoted themselves to prayer. They devoted themselves to prayer. So hence, y'all, from the very beginning, prayer was primary. Early believers did not do anything without first seeking God, for they faithfully believed that God was willing to answer their prayers, and so they asked. Scripture tells us they asked God for healing and deliverance from unclean spirits. They asked God for boldness to speak the word of truth. They asked God to show them signs and wonders. They asked God for forgiveness for themselves and the people that persecuted them. They asked God to raise people up from the dead. They asked God to lead them and to guide them. They asked God to grow them and to mature them in the spirit. They asked God to teach them and help them to win other people for Jesus. Y'all, they prayed for and about everything. And you know... I think, I think that believers after them, that they continue to seek God, to ask for all kinds of, of wondrous and majestic things. However, somewhere, somewhere along the way, we lay down their habit. I am not sure when it happened, but at some point, perhaps decades or, or maybe even centuries ago, we got to a place where prayer became something 
we do the open and close meetings. It is as if prayer has become bookends to what we do. We pray at the beginning of our meeting. We invite God to, to come in. We tell him to remain silent. We meet and we make decisions. And then we pray again, asking God to bless whatever it is that we decide it needs to be done. Now, I am not sure how or, or why this became our habit. Perhaps it has to do with our inability to be still or our, our need to be productive and to, to get as much done as possible. Or quite frankly, y'all, it may just be our pridefulness and our belief that we know more and that we know better than God. Whatever it is, I wonder, I wonder how vastly different both our individual and our collective lives would be if we modeled the early church. What would happen if prayer permeated and undergirded all of our actions, all of our decisions, all of our gatherings, all of our fellowship with each other? What would happen if we prayed first, if we sought God first, if we did not move, if we did not implement another plan, another program, another event until we sought God first and then waited to hear from the living God? Y'all, interestingly enough, prayer for the New Testament church was as natural as breathing. Yet, if truth be told, there are times when it is like pulling teeth to get somebody to even open up a meeting in a word of prayer or to pray for a worship service. And lo and behold, I wonder if I called you. If I called you right now and I said, I need for you to pray for me out loud in this very moment, would you? Now, I know you can do it. I believe in my heart of hearts that you definitely can do it. But do you know that you can do it? Do you practice it? Do you, do we devote ourselves like the disciples to praying in season and out so that when someone calls you or stops you and, and asks you to, to pray for them and ask you to lead them to the throne of God, that you can and you will. Y'all, the New Testament church, they prayed without ceasing. That means that they prayed all the time, not just before and at the end of meetings, but prayer was their lifeline. They knew, they understood that prayer was their strength. And y'all quietness kept, prayer is our strength too. It is the thing that can and that will transform our lives and the lives of those in this community, in this state, in this nation, and this world. It is the thing that can and that will give us power. It is the thing that will give us clarity. It is the thing that will guide us as we move into the future. It is the thing that will sustain us, that will sustain us when trouble surrounds us. It is the thing that will ground us when we don't know what it is that we're supposed to do. But it can't and it won't be our strength if we don't do it if we don't devote ourselves to praying both individually and corporately. Our church council, our church council and our forward focus team just finished reading a book entitled New Wine, New Wine Skins. And it focuses on how we are called to reach new generations of people by being a missional church by taking the time to, to look outside of ourselves and consider the needs of, of others in different generations, of others that live and work and surround us. And, and I'm gonna talk more about that in these coming weeks as we think about these lessons from the New Testament church and how we're called to not just go to church, but to be the church. But in this book that Council and Forward Focus has just finished reading, the author says that the bottom line is that we have to focus on prayer. 
We've got to seek God first and then come up with all of these programs and events and all these things that we want to do. Good things, but things that need to be led and spearheaded by the Holy Ghost. And so the author talks about the centrality of prayer that you that we as individuals who make up the body of Christ, who make up the body of our church, that we cannot and we will not be able to do anything, nothing well, nothing with excellence, if we don't first and always seek our God. The leadership of our church believes that it is time for us to pick up what was laying down, y'all. It is time to resume the habit of prayer, both individually and corporately. Jesus was an example over and over about what it meant for him to leave the multitude, to leave the disciples and go and spend time with the Father. So he teaches us individually, we all got to go and get our daily bread. We all got to go and be with God, but then also like the disciples, we've got to together devote ourselves to prayer. We've got to devote ourselves to prayer. It is time to pray without ceasing. It is time to pray for any and everything. It is time to get our power back. It is time to get our strength back. It is time to look and to listen for the voice of the living God. It is time, y'all, to be transformed and to be used by God to go and transform the world in which we live. And so counsel. Council and the Forward Focus team have recently committed to begin praying together. They have created a prayer plan that they are launching and in the coming weeks and months. You will hear more about this prayer plan as they are starting this plan and then they are going to model. They want to model praying so that you too can get on board and that we all can pray together. For it is prayer, y'all, it is prayer that will guide us as we embark on this 151st year of ministry. It is prayer that is going to sustain us. It is prayer that is going to ground us. It is prayer that will lead us to the clarity of what is next. What is the next thing that God is calling us to do and to be? As we pray today and as we pray every day, may God, may we all seek our God, may we listen to our God, and may we be used by our God. In the name of the Creator and of the Redeemer, and of the sustainer. People of God shall say amen, amen, and amen. The doors of God's church are open today, y'all. And they're open not because I say so or any preacher says so. But the doors of God's church are open because God says, I love you. I need you. I want you. Because God says, I want you to seek me first. I want you to, to fall on your knees, to fall on your face, to go into your private place and call on my name. I want you to, to speak to me, to communicate with me daily on an individual basis, but also I want you to come together as a collective body of believers and call on my name, for I will hear and I will respond to the cries of my people. So know the day. God is waiting for you. God is waiting for you to call God's name, to say, Lord, I yield, I yield. God is waiting for you to say, Lord, I want to say yes to your will. I want to say yes to your way. God is waiting to receive you, and God is waiting to give you your daily bread. But you got to go and get it, y'all. You got to go and get it. So know today that I extend an invitation to you to join a body of believers. 
Yes, there is a body of believers called Wesley, but I'm not just talking about Wesley. I'm inviting you to join the body of believers called the New Testament and the current day church. I'm inviting you to join people all over the globe that say, yes, God, I am yours and you are mine. Now, as you make that decision, I do want you to know that there also is a body of believers at this place called Wesley. And we do, we want to know you. We want to walk with you. We want you to walk with us, knowing that we here join other believers all over the world and seeking to know our God day in and day out, seeking to grow in his grace, seeking to grow in his mercy, seeking to mature in the very spirit of the living God. So if you have a desire to grow and to, and to enter into relationship with God and to also perhaps enter into relationship with this body called Wesley, please be in touch with us. Shoot us an email. Go to any of our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Go to any of those places. Write us a note. Let us know how we can be in touch with you. Give us a call at the church office. We would love to be able to be in conversation with you, to connect with you. We want to know you and we want you to know us. In addition to that, we want to grant you an opportunity to support the ministry of Wesley. At the end of this worship service, you will see that there is a slide that has all of the information about our social media platforms as well as our contact information. And then after that, there is a slide about online giving. And we want to invite you to support this ministry. Uh, we thank you for those of you who have and who continue to support us. For those of you that may have a desire to support us, but you're not financially able to do that right now. We know that God knows your heart and we say thank you for your willingness and your desire to support us. We ask that uh, you continue to pray for us and we certainly want to continue and be able to pray for you. So if you have a desire to give financially, please uh, do that. You will see the link at the end of this worship service. So now y'all, as we ready ourselves to end this service, I want to invite you to join me for a closing prayer and benediction. Uh, and again, I say happy Grandparents Day to our grandparents, and we pray that each of you have a blessed week. Let us pray together. God, we thank you now for all that has occurred this morning. We pray, oh God, believing that your word has gone forth and that it shall never return back void. We thank you, oh God, for the New Testament church. We thank you, oh God, that the, that the disciples devoted themselves to prayer. We thank you, O oh God, for the witness that they are to us, O oh God, about what it means that we ought to pray about any and everything, that our power, that our strength, that all of it resides in us being able to seek you, to call on your name, knowing that you can and you will do any and everything except for fail. We pray, O oh God, that as a church, you would bless us as we go forth in creating a plan to pray, not only individually, but to pray together. We pray, oh God, that you bless our efforts in helping people to learn how to pray, oh God, and, and to learn what to pray, oh God. We pray, God, that we would listen, that we would listen well, and that we would hear and that we would respond to the things that you are sharing with us as we pray and call on your name. Oh God, we love you with all that we are, all that we ever hope to be. Now may the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with you henceforth now and forevermore. People of God shall say amen, amen, and amen.